Hey guys, it's me, and I decided to sit down for this video. I don't know why, I just sort of did. So today's video will be the first Wednesday upload on this channel since June or July, I'm not sure when. So if you didn't know that, then you probably didn't see my last video, which will be taken down as soon as this video goes up. So, uh, if you're wondering why this is uploaded on Wednesday, it's just because the school year started. But today's video is sort of like a follow-up to part one and two of my little BattleBots mini-series that I did just recently on this channel. And uh, I got a lot of comments, as I mentioned before, and I would like to address some of them and maybe um, put my argument on that comment and why I think that I'm right and they're wrong. Look, I just want to win this debate <laughs> because uh, I think some people didn't really understand what I was trying to say in the videos or I didn't make it clear. And if I didn't, then I'm sorry, but I'm going to be dissing your comments. Alright guys, first comment of the video. This one I actually used in my last video because of the really bad grammar at the start, but it actually brings up a fair point, so I'm going to read it and see if I can argue against it. I've got to disagree. Protecting the wheels isn't always important, but can even be harmful. Putting a sheet of metal over your wheels is just asking for them to get pinched. Instead of using sheet metal, use tube steel or other solid pieces which won't get crushed. Some teams like Carbide and Razor have a bit of armor over their wheels. Gabriel even uses his wheels as armor. Okay, fair points. I know, in my first video I said for armor, just put a sheet of metal over your wheels. What I really meant by that is just to put some sort of metal over your wheels. I'm not a materials expert, I'm not an expert BattleBots builder, if you couldn't tell. I was just making the generalization that protecting your wheels that way you don't lose your mobility is very important. That's why I said putting a sheet of metal over your wheels would be the best course of action. Oh yeah, a uh, little disclaimer, I really wish I would have mentioned this in my first videos. I made the points based on generalization out of all BattleBots, what would generally be the most reliable, most destructive, and most overpowered BattleBot in the game. While yes, flamethrowers are useful in some situations, they're not generally the best weapon to use, so I decided, no, I should not include that as a good weapon and so on, such as a full body spinner. You can make good full body spinners, but they're hard to come across and they usually just uh, destroy themselves. So I thought, no, that should not be one of our good weapons either because they destroy themselves and that would lose you a fight. So thank you for the comment. You brought up a good point, but my argument is I'm not a materials expert and I was just making a generalization. Tombstone is the best robot. Enough said. All right, moving on. Oh yeah, this comment was based on my mini bot point in part two, and uh, apparently mini bots can be useful. But remember, this is you know what? Never mind. Let's just read the comment and see what it says. Oh hell no! First of all, mini bots aren't useless because they alone can knock out the opponent by high centering them, like Son of Wayashi mini bot did to Ghost Raptor, which allowed him to deliver the fatal blow. You know what, I'll come back to that in a second. Second of all, flamethrowers can be effective if used correctly, like when complete control cook bombshell. There are so many things wrong with this comment. Okay, first thing that I want to address, you said minibots can knock out other robots by themselves by immobilizing them. And yes, that is true, but how many times have you actually seen that happen on a reliable basis? If the main bot is lower than your minibot, the minibot's not going to do anything. If it can't get under in any way, there is no way that it's going to do anything for your bot. Okay, second point about the minibot one, you said that it pinged Ghost Raptor, and then Son of Wayashi landed the finishing blow. Problem is, the main bot still did all the work, really. And I'm guessing if Ghost Raptor got close enough to Son of Wayashi, he would have delivered the fatal blow anyway. So how much did the mini bot actually do within that fight? And the third one, flamethrowers. As I said earlier, my best battle bots and my points are based on the overall best battle bot for covering the most situations without customizability and changing weapons and armor and all that sort of stuff. While you can do that, and that might have been a good thing to go over in that video, I did not use that as a factor when coming up with my points, so I decided not to include it. So in this comment, they talked about flamethrowers being very effective, but the problem was this situation, he grabbed them and burned through them for a while. But this year, there's a new rule where you can only hold on to a bot for 20 seconds and 20 seconds is not long enough to burn through solid titanium. So even if you could get the flames on, 
it would burn a little bit, but then the metal would cool off and you have to restart and it would just be a useless, ongoing, not effective process. All right, last comment of the video. And this is a very long comment, so uh, bear with me. I can point out a few things. One, armor is important, but it's not a major look at the likes of Huge and Gabriel. Both have d armor designed to bend and absorb the hits. Two, the weapon should be focused on reliability rather than pure power. Look at the example Nightmare. And <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm just going to... I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to read it and then try to explain what it's trying to say. So uh, you might have to give me a, a few minutes. A few moments later. Now that I've read through this comment, the first point is talking about how armor isn't quite as important as I made it seem, as the likes of Huge and earlier mentioned Gabriel. If you've seen Huge, you know he has giant wheels that really he can't protect based on the design of his robot, but they're designed to absorb hits and bend easily. So actually, yes, this is very smart in Huge's part, but remember, I'm still talking about overall out of all the bots. I feel like Huge in this year's tournament is going to get taken out by a bot that's too low for him to hit. Like, if it's a flat, flatter bot, like, again, Tombstone, he's gonna have a hard time hitting Tombstone, and Tombstone will just tear up his wheels eventually. But that's assuming that Huge does fight Tombstone, and if he doesn't, then oh well. Second thing, the weapon should be re focused on reliability instead of power. Again, fire and full body spinners are generally not reliable, and I mentioned that. So I think you just sort of glazed over that. But I can see where you're coming from, that makes sense, but you also need to have a lot of power in your weapons for the weapons to be effective and to help you out in the actual competition. Third point out of four, he mentioned that durability is the most important thing and not mobility. Well, actually those two kind of go hand in hand. You keep mobility if your robot is durable, so actually durable can kind of go under mobility in that sense. But then again, durability is what keeps your bot alive, so that's a fair point and I'm going to accept that one. And four, the internal part of the robot is what makes the robot move, and there's so many things that can go wrong inside the bot. And yes, there is, but that's how all robots are. And you need to protect those inner workings, which is why I said protect the inner workings, such as the drive chain, and the batteries, and anything else inside your robot. The CPU, the motherboard, and stuff like that. You know, you don't want to lose signal or lose complete. I just thought of a really bad pun. You don't want to lose signal or complete control, get it, while in a robot fight because you'll definitely lose real fast. And yes, that does make sense, so I'm going to keep that point. But the reason all your points are invalid is because you need to put some periods and commas. <laughs> Jeez, what happened here, buddy? See, this is one of the problems with doing YouTube is uh, you can't read half of the stuff that your viewers like to uh, say. And yes, that would be the end of the video. I wanted to clear up some things from part one and two. So does this technically count as part three? Sure. But just so you know, this is more or less a follow up more than a part three to the series. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe, like all that good stuff. Oh, and be sure to also leave a question for our Q and A because that will finally be coming up soon because Isaac, Rafe and I all have a free weekend coming up very soon. So I'm Callum from CR Inventions and I'll see you in the next video.